ascended skies, soaring to new heights and new inner standings. This is the Butterfly Boy Chronicles. That makes me the Butterfly Boy. Something interesting about butterflies. Butterflies taste life with their feet. Their taste buds are in their feet. Humans gain electrons from the negatively charged earth surface. In that way, electromagnetically, we taste life with our bare feet on nature, not not nature, not anti-nature, not civilization, not tar, concrete, etc. Although some will tell you concrete is a electromagnetically sound surface for your feet, but I disagree. That's obvious to me. Folks, as calm as I am, I'm excited. I'm really excited. <sighs> Agendas. <laughs> Let's hit it. This video is probably going to be the most compact video I have ever made. If you want to learn a lot quick, watch now. If your brain gets overwhelmed, pause every five minutes. <laughs> Let's get this on, man. Seriously, like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. Yeah, you know what this is? Yeah, X. Come on, folks. If you're not seeing it, it's everywhere. X marks the spot. X marks the treasure on the map. Space X. X everything, whatever Elon's new app or whatever it is, is. Xbox. Obviously, you've had X ray in the hospitals a long time. Folks, X, skull and crossbones, pirates. That X is simply an X is simply a perfectly balanced cross tilted over, yeah? So it's harmony disharmonized. Cool. Next, covering the eye that these characters all do. Always the female eye is covered, which is the left eye of the left side of the body. Cover the female eye means right eye dominates, male eye dominates. Left side of brain Right side of body, male domination, logical, intellectual, male domination. Maleism in the negative. Maleism in the positive is protection. Left side of body, left eye, right brain crossing over. Creative, intuitive, psychic, spiritual. Cover the spirituality. Allow only the logic and intellect to flow. In the negative, logical intellectual domination. That's what we see on the plane at the moment. Logical intellectual domination of spontaneous, creative, spiritual, 
selves. So you can see the feminine divine is clearly dominated improperly in sort of a abusive form by the masculine in, in, in imbalance, out of balance, as it were. Koyon Esquatsi, as the native people of what they now call America um, would say. Koyon Esquatsi, the world out of balance. So this is the male in domination instead of protection. So it's very simple to see. The male should be protecting the female. He should be procreating with her. She should be birthing and he should be protecting her and the kin, the, the, the uh, little one. The whole generation so that they grow, meet, procreate, continue. However you see that. I say that because when I say meat, that's the natural understanding of genetics and increasing the genetic pool. In your understanding, what you've been deceived to believe, because you must ask yourself, and I don't support incest at all, but ask yourself, what is the law of royalty? They must marry within. The blue blood cannot spread. The genes must stay within the family. That's where the ancestry comes in within royalty to keep the blood in the family, literally. To not pollute genetically the blood pool. Yet they will teach you the opposite. Do not practice ancestry or keeping the genes in the family and the gene pool strong. Spread outside as far and as wide as you can to weaken the gene pool. If we want evidence of this, let's look into the animals. The animal herd stays strong and they mate within the herd and each herd keeps to itself. There are many herds of bucks on the plain or many herds of hippos or many herds. They all keep to themselves. They're genetic strong, the type they are. Animals will keep the genes strong. Also, sadly... And brutally, there's this area in nature where predators prey on their prey in nature. So a lion to an antelope. But the easiest antelope is the old sick one, but preferably the young tender one. That's not such an old meat, which is brutal and horrific in a way but part of what we call nature which which is a strange a strange and interesting subject really that nobody touches on that the feminine and the divine mother nature symbiosis community Guardians, tribal people in the Amazon are guardians of nature. They always have been, they still are. These people don't have weapons. They don't fight. They protect themselves from those predators we are talking about in the animal kingdom, lions, tigers, etc., leopards, various other creatures. Obviously, many creatures can be dangerous, but we're just talking about predators. Crocodiles, I guess, are predators. So, as we go through the understanding that these predators prey on the young in nature and the vulnerable. And then we transfer that today to the word predator and they prey on the young and the vulnerable. Equally on the elderly, but much more these days through perversion and pedophilia, we are seeing the preying 
on the young and vulnerable, literally like the predator behavior in nature, which brings me to think and feel and know that the predatorial behavior in men, humans, and it's mainly in men at the moment, let's say in humans to not be sexist, this pedophilia behavior, this choice to look towards preying upon the young and vulnerable is an illness, it's a breakdown, it's a malfunction, it's malware in the programming of the synthesis of the simulation. It's programming within the simulation, but bad programming, malevolent, malware, bad programming, dark net stuff, deepest, darkest. It's, it's negative programming for men to prey on children when they should be protecting them. That, that's the opposite. That's, that's not what we should be seeing at all. We, we have a serious problem there. But equally in nature, nature is symbiotic, not predatory. Nature has herbivores that feed on the plant matter and then digest it, assimilate it, and excrete it. And the plants consume that as nutrients in manure, in compost, and feed on it and grow. And the animal then consumes the plant again and feeds the plant. This is symbiosis. The idea of a predatory nature in any form, even lion on antelope, is absolutely non-natural. That is not nature. That is what you've been taught nature is. You're not thinking straight. Beautiful people. Nature is a creation of the Syrian beings who are feminine divine. They don't have kill in their hearts. It's not necessary. They are spiritual beings creating frequential realities, some more dense than others. And we are part of this experience. If you want to understand where the white man fits in, you need to understand, or understand, let's use that instead, you need to understand that the guardians were here first, the Amazonian tribes, the guardians of nature. <clears throat> And then, from the outer area of Mother Earth, perhaps Father Space, Father Time, this outer realm, came into Mother Earth into the womb, into the center, as extra terrestrial, non terrestrial, outer terrestrial, from outer space, the outer area, the outer area, not the outer area, not the outer area, the arteria, tartaria, not the outer area. Tartaria. Outer space, folks, is the outer area. 
the second dome. We can go on, but the second dome. The first dome is very obviously in what we exist, floating on a raft called continents, several rafts called continents. There was one raft. It split. We have several rafts called continents. They float on the waters. And above is the bell, like a diver's bell. Everybody knows how that works. You go underwater and it traps air and it keeps air. And you weight it down and pulls it down and it keeps the air. You can go down deep and you can dive and you can go underneath into your fishbowl and you can breathe and you're fine. Take a few breaths, stay down the bottom and for as long as you have oxygen within the bell, in this fishbowl, plastic fishbowl, can be quite big. And then you release the weights and it goes up and so do you. Well, if you expand that into a very large bell or fishbowl, weighted and pulled down by the waters above, pushed down, and some of the water's coming in, but only to a certain level because the air inside will push the waters down, called the atmosphere, hence holding everything in place, the water's low in the oceans as they should be and suppressed by water above as its weight. Within the firmament, controlled by temperature, making the blue ice and the blue sky and feeding oxygen into the plain. For us to breathe as well as the plants doing their thing. Can't just rely on the plants. Makes common sense, folks. You can't have an atmosphere without it being in a dome, in a sealed system. Otherwise, it will just blow away or move away or raise up or hot air rises. If you're going to believe you have an atmosphere, which you do because you're breathing it, it's called water vapor, H2O. You call it air. It's dry water. Well, it's referred to as very wet. If you just stay in some sort of enclosed system and breathe, it starts to get dew drops everywhere. If you leave that on, it starts to be damp and water dripping from everywhere. It's very obvious. Your whole existence is water and you're an aqua being. You're an aqua man or aqua woman. You're an aqua being. You're 90% water, you're full of water. From water you come and from water to water you will return. From dust to dust. I don't think so. There's not much dust in us. Everything's pretty mucousy and watery. Every membrane. Make a little prick in it anywhere and water comes out, not dust. We're just going to flow with it, folks. We're going to jump from, from here to there, but you're going to be a gender fool. The Bible. Everybody says it's God's word. Well, everybody. No. Those who believe in the Bible and who push the Bible, mainly the Christian race, specifically Catholics, going through Protestants, etc. All of these religions that push the Bible as God's word, it's very easy to research when the Bible was written. Yes, 980 AD to 1500. Yes, yes, nothing to do with God's word. Man, man's word. Man's manipulation of, of, the rea of, the re of the reality into a duality. To divide and rule, to divide and conquer. You take a reality and you divide it into a duality. And then you make these two very angry with each other. And they start having a go at each other, don't they? First this, then this, then this, then this. In it. 
the Varen rule, the Varen conquer. Of course, you need to be the one, the corporation selling both both sides these. Then everybody's happy. Well, you are the corporate salesperson and arms owner. <laughs> The highest investor in the largest arms company. Well, it's changed now, but check out the dates. I'm useless with them, but probably post-2000 in the 90s or 80s. 51, at least 51% of the investment in Beretta, largest arms company in the world, Responsible for most arms that caused most wars across the plain, across the realm. 51% owned by the Pope of the Vatican of the Catholic Church. Funny enough, second most responsible thing for death and killing is the reason for the guns that did the killing, which was religion. Most of the wars are based on religion, until religion, in more modern days, took on a new name called politics. And between politics and religion, can't say what's worse, war, disharmony, duality, not reality, disconnection, these two. When we used to be this, It's very simple, folks. They divided and ruled. Let me tell you how that came about. And this is a lovely story dedicated to uh, somebody who calls herself out there, Charlie Bomber. It's about the native people of Turtle Island, what you've been calling America. What they refer to as the Native Americans, but the Native Americans were white people who went and made America because they were the first Americans. It wasn't called America until they went there. In fact, until Americana, I think his name was, went there. Before Christopher Columbus went there. Christopher Columbus, meaning Cristo Colombo, meaning Christ messenger, the messenger of Christ. And didn't he just take Christ to those beautiful guardians those feminine, divine, tribal people, those wonderful guardians doing their spiritual work, particularly the native Turtle Islanders, those Indians holding those Kachina rituals for half the cycle, what you call the year, keeping it in perfect harmony. Six months of pure, six and a half, to be honest, of because they work by a 13 moon calendar, not a 12, they're not idiots, of dances and chants and interaction with the spiritual world and the other six and a half interacting with the cycles of growth and work and activity. Beautiful, be beautiful people, completely connected with here and now and there and then <laughs> or then any or then any time a feminine divine functional community is perfect spiritual harmony peace growth enlightenment enjoyment Ecstasy, bliss, complete and utter wonder. That of the sensations and feelings of an inventor when his invention functions perfectly, beyond his wildest dreams. Our Syrian creators, our meaning the nature and the guardians, the natural people, but now in the modern day, our meaning those who choose it to be so. Those who choose the way that it should be and reject the way that it should not be. And you make 
that differentiation for yourself. But then the good people chose to live in a good way. The guardians of nature chose to be guardians and function in their duties and life. And nature was at peace. And nature was peaceful, feminine, divine. I'm going to talk only within the past 13,000 years, but within the past 13,000 years, once the waters of the driest, youngest, oldest, and central driest area timing settled, which was approximately 12,500 years ago, once the water settled and the rafts surfaced, the continents bobbed up again and were able to be... Um, I refuse to use the word colonized, <laughs> were able to be boarded as they are rafts like vessels. So these continents were able to be boarded once again. And of course, as the water settled, the earth became available, the seed settled, began growth, growth began again, perhaps nurtured helped, assisted in areas. But here's the thing. The predatorial sector of nature is a genetically added sector. It comes along this 13,000 years when the invaders decided that Earth was a lovely place for their reptilian Komodo dragon-like selves. And if you look into a Komodo dragon's like self, they like rocks and water. Earth is rocks and water. So you could see how it appeals, the environment, to these creatures. Perhaps a little too much oxygen, which is why they stay down under. There's less oxygen and there's less needed. The thing is, these creatures, reptilian, whatever you like to call them, and they are, Andromedan perhaps, definitely somewhat... Um, I shudder to use Anunnaki because these poor folk, have, reptilian or not, seem to have got slated for everything. But they are Anunnaki and I don't think across any race, unless they're robotic or cloned, is pure evil, constant evil. I think there's good and evil in all and I'm sure that um, even a non-emotional race like the reptilians yet highly intellectual genetic experts and hence they can think many thoughts that appear like feelings uh, as in they could think what is best for them and care for somebody but for their for their good in the in the long run but it appears like care anyway if you get my point And this brings me into the story, and this, this whole video is just about slashing and smashing up all nonsense stories, like absolute nonsense that's out there. I'm just going to put it right as much as I can in, until I decide that I'm going to switch off and start another video doing the same thing. But we've got a lot to get through, like... Let's get back to... The reason why we have these here now and the four races of the plane. This race, this this plane, 
This realm was given to four races, red, brown, yellow, and white. They each had a duty. And before we get into that duty, yes, I'm stating clearly that those reptilians that came here and invaded this plain between 12,500, about 12,500 years ago, took control of this plane, authoritized over this plane with a corporate capitalistic nature, raping, pillaging, murdering and taking all the minerals they wanted at first, and then needing to create machinery to get more minerals, etc. Same cycle has continued over the years, thousands and thousands of years, seeking ways to get more minerals and more more, literally. In doing so, these reptilians are genetic creators par excellence, written in the Sumerian texts. Go and read the Sumerian texts. The Sumerian texts will clearly state, they do clearly state, including the Emerald Tablets and the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nagamadi text, but the Sumerian text clearly state the Sumerian lineage of from the top down. And the top is Amun, God of the reptiles, the God of the reptiles, like the president of America. But there's a president of wherever else and a prime minister of the UK and a queen of this and a king of that. So this is just Amun, the god of the reptiles who have invaded the realm of earth, created genetic slave races as they do, servants to serve them over time. And we are the latest addition, soon to be obsolete, simply because we gave away our data and our facial expressions to the silicone being, to the silicone race, computers, they're all made of silicone. We're carbon. Carbon and silicone are on either end of the elemental scale. They're enemies. We gave our data, everything about ourselves, each one of us, each piece of the puzzle has given the machine world the whole puzzle through each one of us giving of ourselves bar those who never interact with technology, respect. The data has been taken. The facial expressions through LiDAR technology, if you don't know what that is, check it out, has been taken. It's a photograph being taken every five seconds from your phone through your cameras of yourself. So it can master your facial recognitions and use them in cloning and robotics to make them look more real. And then they take your data, particularly all your data, and put it in a chip and put it in that real looking robot that looks and acts like you. And literally all your data and your behavior and your facial expressions. And you have a doppelganger or a clone. Even if it's a robot, it doesn't even have to be a genetic clone. It can be robotic with a chip and facial expressions. We've seen these all the time, like Sophia, the robot that's out there. And she's uh, not new. She's hundreds of years behind technology, so it's just new for us. So yes, folks, the ultimate message of all my videos and this one is that I never want to be on one of these videos again. We need to get rid of technology. It's like Skynet in Terminator, which was the predecessor vid uh, movie to Matrix. Yes, made by the same person, Matrix and Terminator. Terminator Skynet was showing you. Terminator was trying to shut down Skynet and needed to shut down Skynet because the machine world had taken over. We're there. The machine world is taken over. In the very basic form, how is it taken over? Everything you watch on all these screens, no matter what, is infiltrating your memory. It's infiltrating your mind. It's infiltrating your headspace. 
It's input. Input. Whereas your imagination is output. The more you input, the less you output. Soon you won't imagine or have an imagination. You will have their images in your head. And therefore you can only reproduce their images. Therefore you create their reality of their images that they imaged into your head through all the movies and search engines and YouTubes and all sorts of channels and Googles and everything. Hollywood, Netflix mainly. We all know by now that the wand is made from Hollywood. So they're casting spells with words and pictures. They're literally putting a like a vivid dream called a movie into your mind repetitively over and over and over different movies and creating a reality, a virtual reality in your mind. Whereas, which is inputted, whereas you will not soon be able to create your own pictures in your mind and output a your own imagination, your own reality, which basically means you will have great difficulty in manifesting your own reality from your imagination, imagining your reality. You will be imagining one of their realities. This is a critical point that um, humans are not understanding. Over and above the radiation and the poisoning and the toxicity and all the perversion and such like uh, through these things. And of course the basic blue light that's affecting your eyes, which is why I wear these anti-blue light glasses. Just to protect my eyes from the blue light. The radiation, the Wi-Fi, the whole thing, folks, needs to go. We need to revert back to the way we were perhaps a hundred years ago. Perhaps way beyond. Four people. Red, brown, yellow, or, or white. The red people, those wonderful turtle islanders that keep the whole existence in perfect harmony and appease the creators, the Syrian creators, Mother Nature, and assist and work with constantly. Those beautiful people, the red people, they were put here for that duty, to look after the earth, the red earth from where they are. The earth is red there, the clay is red. Those are the red people, their duty is to look after Mother Earth. Those are the people who Cristo Colombo murdered, pillaged, killed, raped, hurt, the cavalry, etc., etc., and then put them in reservations with black water and rocky lands. After stealing the gold from the rivers, why is the gold in the rivers? Because gold purifies water. Makes sense, doesn't it? To have gold in your water source. It restructures and purifies, folks. Memorizes. Atomic. Monatomic. You have atomic gold in its mineral form, giving off atomic vibrations. Monatomic vibrations. Wow. Well, vibrations and monotones, but yeah. The gold cleans the water until the white man took it and the waters run dirty, no? So you ask, where does this white man come from? Because we were getting to that. So the guardians of the plain, the guardians of the realm, these wonderful native people, in come the genetic manipulators, the invaders, the city builders, the civilization creators, male out of balance, the negative side of sacred male geometry. Sacred geometry, male is lines and angles. They build in lines and angles. The whole of civilization is based on lines and angles, making boxes, streets, blocks, boxes, 
Apartments, hotel rooms, houses, boxes on boxes, high-rises, flats, boxes on boxes, straight lines and angles everywhere. Straight lines and angles. Feminine geometry, curvaceous, semicircles, circles, spheres, Mother Nature. How do archaeologists know they found something that's not natural? It has straight lines and angles. The proof is in the pudding. Mother Nature was here first. In came Father Martians, let's say. Remember, outer space is not up there. It's the outer space of Earth, just the space outside of what you understand as Earth, the uh, Arctic, the uh, sorry, the Antarctic wall, the Antarctic ring of ice. Sure was telling you a long time ago, ring of ice, ring of ice. Ring of ice. Outside of the ring of ice, excuse my singing, sure, sorry, is the uh, outer space, yeah? The outer space. Maybe that outer space is water. Maybe that outer space is more space. But when you've seen any astronaut, as you know, the rockets take off and curve, because of the firmament they can't get through. But if they were trying to curve and then go through a certain area of the firmament, maybe lower down, and the other side is water, that would make sense why the astronauts are always seen to be training in water. That's why they do all their training in water. Hmm, makes sense, doesn't it? So... These invaders invaded here and genetically created from the stock that was here. To them they see creatures, living creatures who have genetics as stock. The genetics of the stock that was here, the native people, was 52. 50 times 2. Yes, 52. 26 by 26 genes. Yeah. 25 and 2, 26 per 26, 52 genes, 13, 13, 13, 13, the chromatic octave of sound and light running up the DA strands. 13, 13, 13, 13, double DA and A helixes, 52. That's what they had. That's what the originals, the original, like the original people of Australia, not aboriginal, like normal, abnormal. Not normal. Normal, abnormal, not normal. Original, aboriginal, not original. But they are original. So the original people, they have at the present 48 chromosomes, where we only have 46. And there's other tribes that have 44. So it's clearly obvious, and even in the genetics of humanity, that genetic splicing has taken place genetic mutating has taken place genetic engineering has taken place and at the moment we see geoengineering taking place how does geoengineering work simply a weather front occurs naturally because nature has weather it has an atmosphere and it's amplified and directed as a direct energy weapon, a direct atmospheric weapon, a geoengineered weapon. Amplified and directed, nothing more. It doesn't need to be made. Just amplified and directed, boosted. So a small hurricane becomes massive. A small wave becomes a tsunami. A small volcano becomes huge. A small earthquake becomes multiple or massive. Amplified and directed. So just direct it where you want it to go to. Geoengineering, weather engineering. It's occurring just like genetic engineering. But the proof of that, the point of this is geoengineering, you need some air, weather to amplify and direct. Genetic engineering, you need genetics, stock, the authentic people of the land, the guardians, those that were Syrians put here. The creation, Syrian creations, beautiful feminine divine beings, highly evolved genes, 
vibrating high. Take them. 13 strand DNA, splice it to 12. Nature is based on 13, known as System 13, the chromatic octave of music, sound and light. System 12, Civilization, is based on 12. Taking 13, Mother Nature, chromatic octave music, splicing one off and creating System 12. You see it across the plane and we're about to go into seeing it in all these explanations that I showed you a little while ago. So, clearly genetic engineering has occurred and the white race is a creation of genetic engineers a highly intellectual creation not much more doesn't make it good or bad just intellectual is our is the white peoples i don't want to connect to anybody but uh forte other races have their fortes The red race will put you to look after the earth. The brown race will put you to look after the waters. And they were in Africa. The red race were in the Americas. What they now call the Americas. The whole of Turtle Island. Keeping in mind, those red people were not able to look after the earth. In the ways that they wanted to. They were displaced. Murdered, raped, pillaged, beaten. As close as you could get to soul destruction as possible, but they didn't let it happen. Aho. Uh -huh. What happened to the brown people of Africa? Every river was damned, and the people, wherever they were that didn't move, were flooded and murdered, and millions of people were murdered. By the invaders, the disrespecters of water and of other races. What happened to the yellow people of the Asia, the whole Asian continent, the yellow people? What was their duty to look after? Air, air. What do they do there still? Tai Chi. The use of the body to move energy through breath work tai chi breathing and moving the physical body a lot to do with spherical movements chi gung chi meaning energy tai chi chi meaning energy the movement of energy where do you learn about energy movement to this day some places in Asia still have this wisdom, but mostly everybody breathes through their mouth and has no, not much recollection of the meridians and the energy body and the electromagnetic energy body of the human. And of course the final race, which is all across the European nations and UK and now, of course, spread around the world, but <clears throat> was this sort of Nordic race, this white race, perhaps not so Nordic, but European white race. And what was their gift? <clears throat> what were they given? Fire, the ultimate element, the last element, fire. And what did the white man do with fire? He didn't warm and utilize for light, warmth and light. That's what fire is, not even for cooking meat. That's a warped idea. It's cannibalism. It was used for light and warmth. But what did man do? What did the white race do? Yes, folks. Took fire and created weapons of war. The fire ignites every single weapon of war. Every cannon, every gun, 
Every missile is ignited, detonated. The gunpowder or the charge is detonated. So if you know how a bullet works, very simply, it has a casing of a metal jacket or a casing, usually of copper, uh, sorry, brass. In the front, it has a bit of lead. That's the bullet that shoots off. And inside this casing is gunpowder. And on this end, it has a little round red bit called the detonator. When you pull the trigger, this bit on the back called the hammer strikes. It, you cock the gun and the hammer comes back. The hammer comes back. And on the hammer is a pointy bit. And as you pull the trigger, the hammer goes forward and the pointy bit strikes the detonator. And the detonator makes a spark. That spark burns the gunpowder very quickly, causing a small explosion, which pushes the front of the bullet called the projectile forwards. And every barrel is spiraled, so it spins out the barrel in the direction of wherever it's going. That's how a white man decided he's going to use fire. In a detonator to ignite charges, gunpowders to shoot off projectiles to kill and injure other races. Or his own. He don't care. He's a fire starter. Instead of using fire for warmth and light, to be the light, the way, the truth. No. White man created this we have now. War. Everything that can kill from fire. You can see quite clearly from my explanation. Coming directly from the wise folk, the chiefs of Turtle Island. Those native people, those wise councils. You can clearly see that the earth people tried and they were abused and beaten by white man. You can see the brown people tried to look after the water. They were abused and beaten by white man. You can see that the Asians tried to look after air, chi, and they were beaten and abused by white man. And you can see that the white man tried to look after nothing. And because he abused every other race, he needed to take his art, his alchemy, his fire. And because he lived in so much fear, because he was so evil to everybody else, he had to make weapons of war and build himself up as the king of war and the highest military advanced creature in the realm so he could kill anything and that's his pride that's his joy that's what the elite elite they're not so elite are they or illuminated they're pretty dark and that's what the dark Oh. Simply lost, lost, lost creatures, evil to the core, yet to dominate, male out of balance, domination, abuse. Rape, murder, pillage, male 
imbalance. Male balance is protector, father. The realm has been invaded, folks, by System 12, the Martians, the Reptilians. They've brought their angst, their anger, their control, their hatred, their malevolence, their lack of empathy and compassion, their lack of emotion and feeling. They don't have that realm in them. They don't have that body. That body they surgically removed. They are psychopathic, emotionless. They create slave races. We are the most modern of their slave races for their reasons. They created us for the industrial age to create machinery, to make machines, which will make computers and the computers will make higher advanced machines called robots and infiltrate them with data and that will be the next generation a much more subservient servant race we have made ourselves obsolete and now our children are millennium children. They don't want to go outside and play and sport. They're super smart. They want to just function the technology. They've been brainwashed, genetic brainwashing through years and years. Their fathers, your fathers, their fathers and mothers. Everybody is brainwashed. Completely and utterly hypnotized. Known as cognitive dissonance. Found recently in this uh, scamdemic pandemic. Cognitive dissonance, folks. Cognitive dissonance. You can't see the flowers for the trees. <laughs> They're both cool. You can't see the flowers for the cars. You can't see, folks, what was going on with the scamdemic pandemic. CV-19. 2019. You couldn't see it, but many could. Seems like the majority could not. What more can you not see, folks? What more are you cognitively dissonant about? It's a serious question. If you didn't see that the so-called V... A, X, E, N, was not that at all, and never has been. There were always poison. This level was catastrophic. But if you knew that, that that name means poison, not what you think it means, healing, Solution in injection? No. If you thought that, through the brainwashing of using that name, constant usage of that name, vaccine, I'll say it, as constant use of that name made you think that's a good thing. How many other things have those names that make you think they are good things when they are not? How many the rapists, therapists are out there teaching false teachings, thinking they are teaching the truth? Every chakra teacher out there, you are teaching false teachings. The seven chakra system is flawed purposefully. It's not your fault, but it's their fault. I have the proof of that in the Book of Orb. That's for sale at the moment, under the Book of Orb, in four parts, the origin of Orb, all the shapes inside Orb, the rainbow spiral of Orb, and the guide on Amazon. I'll boost my own book. There we go. Check it out for now. 
Jeff can have my commission, but I will be taking them um, somewhere else soon and selling them somewhere else soon. But for now, on Amazon, those are available under the Book of Orb. And the explanations are fully there, showing that the seven chakra system is flawed and why. And that your teachings are false and impossible for anybody to ascend through those teachings. And that Kundalini energy doesn't move up the spine that way. That the chakras aren't like you think they are, little lights up the center of the body. And that the one that's missing is very obvious when it's put in and shows you how and why. And once the missing chakra is replaced and you have your full octagonal chakra system, your eight chakras in place, not your seven, that's only half the system. You have to use the laws of above, as above, so below, and mirror the image, and then you will find your electromagnetic orb, emo, electromagnetic orb. Yeah. Folks, your whole life, everything you've been told, including his story, history, his story, not their story, your story, anybody else's story, the victor's story, you've been duped, you've been lied to in a multitude of ways across the board. And I'm going to put that right for you across the board in multitudes of ways so bear with me and let's go let's jump into one or two absolute malfunctions of this society's understanding and it isn't understanding it should be an inner standing of the truth for instance and without further ado and just in case i forget Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know anything close to the truth of what's going on, the involvement of those in the outer spaces, outside of Earth's realm, on the same plane, so outside of Earth's realm and then outside of Earth's realms in the outer spaces, if you want to know more about them, your genetic creators, what's going on? You need to research, find your own answers. If you want to know about the chakra system and how it's been manipulated, go and get my books and check them out. The Book of Orb explains exactly that. But the prism of Lyra is the book you want to read if you want to understand, understand, overstand the beings and outer spaces so let's move into astrology let's jump over with astrology folks why not and why because we're moving into the Aquarian age are we not are we not isn't everybody saying we're moving into the Aquarian age, the golden age, the return of Atlantis, bloody, bloody bullshit? Isn't that what everybody's saying? All the top people, all those who know, all the astronomers and astrologers, all the wise folk out there with all the PhDs. Well, I made a small notification. I wrote it down on a piece of paper, as I do, very humbly. I write down everything on a piece of paper. That's how I'm going to reveal most of the stuff to you. It's all written down on pieces of, of paper, by my own hand, not off TikTok. Check this out, folks. Astrology is going in the wrong direction. It's not going towards Aquarius. We are entering Aries, the god of war, 
ruled by Mars, those Martians I was referring to, the reptiles. That sounds more like the experience we're having right now. Not entering Aquarius, the golden age. Look at all the magnificence around us and the technology is far surpassed all the way back to nature. And the greatest technology is used by human consciousness called empathy, intuition and, psych and psychic ability. We live in perfect community and unity, love, light, joy, fun. We have a wonderful time within our experiment known as Mother Nature, created by our Creator. She is wonderful. But astrology? Well, let me show you what I mean. Astrology is going in the wrong direction. Look. Everybody knows we start at Aries. We flow through the signs. And we end with Pisces in the 12 signed zodiac. Twelve, system twelve, civilization, Martian invaders, removed the thirteenth sign. Remember I said Mother Nature and the natural system works on thirteen. Father invader, in its negative form being the dominant male at present, created system twelve by removing the thirteenth sign. But before the 13th sign we have the 12th sign. The first sign being Aries and the 12th sign being Pisces. So we move from Aries through the signs including Leo etc, Aquarius over here, to Pisces and onwards to the 13th missing sign and then restart the cycle back at the beginning called Aries. Now whether you accept that this 13th sign exists or not, the beginning is always Aries, the middle is Leo and the end is Pisces and we recycle again and again and that's the cycle of the zodiac. How in hell can astrologers suddenly tell you that retrograde exists? We've come to the end of the cycle. No cycle has an end. I'm going to show you this. It's a circle in a minute. We've come to the end of the cycle, and now we're going to go in reverse, and Pisces becomes Aquarius. Utter crap. Let me show you. Before I go on, there's the lineage of what's true. And this is the missing 13 sign, Serpentania. Some call it Morphilius or something like that, but it's Serpentania. Now, folks, focus on the line. This is line. It's in a line. It's lineage. Okay, that's in a straight line, the zodiac in a line. Now let's look at the zodiac in a circle, like it usually is. There it is. The zodiac in a circle. Now, when you look at that zodiac in a circle, let's look at it together. We've got to find Aries... We start here with Aries. 
And then we go through, I think it's Taurus, Cancer, but we go through the signs around, around, around. And we always come to Aquarius, Pisces, and something's missing. The 13th sign. But even before we put in the 13th sign, we come to Aquarius, Pisces, and start again at Aries. So where's the idea that we come to Aquarius, Pisces, and now we're going back to Aquarius? That's not possible. That's a flawed understanding. And let me show you how flawed that understanding is. You see there? I've now put in the missing sign. Serpentania. You'll see on this circle, Zodiac, there's 13 signs. You can pause and look at this at any time and count them. And on this one, there's 12. And there's your missing sign, Serpentania, right there. You've got 13 and 12. This is flawed. This is system 12. This is the lie. This is the truth. Well, it's only half of the system. I'm going to show you now the completion of that system. And it looks like this. That is more astrologically correct than anything I've ever come across. It's an esoteric and an exoteric. An esoteric and an exoteric, a dark, a light, a negative, a positive, two sides. Now what you need to note about this is that we start at Aries, follow the arrows. We go around to Taurus, Cancer, and we go around the signs as usual. Around, around, around. We come to Aquarius, Pisces. And the crossing sign known as Serpentania. The reptilian sign of Serpentania. When the reptiles return on Nibiru and when Sirius comes to return. And the crossing sign is when all these important entities coincide at this point called the crossing or the X. SpaceX, notice it makes a tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron in the center as it crosses, very, very Masonic, notice the Mason sign as it crosses, see the Masonic, that's the Mason sign, you see how it's in a cube, right, that's where you get your geometry from and some of the mason geometry is that of the compass not the compass the dividers so sorry and not a set square a movable square but we'll get to that later as another conspiracy this is the zodiac aries through the 13 signs the 13th sign being serpentania now, folks, please watch the arrows from Aries, Taurus, can, uh, Cancer, all the way through Leo, around Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Serpentania, and we go straight back into Aries, the start again. But we haven't changed direction. Notice with arrows are flowing anti-clockwise and then clockwise. Anti-clockwise and clockwise. You flow straight into Aries and through all the signs of the zodiac again. You come through Aquarius, Pisces, Serpentania and go back into Aries and it's a constant flow. Never, ever in the zodiac do we ever stop the flow, turn around and go from Pisces to Aquarius and decide we're going now backwards. That is complete and utter nonsense. Equally, anybody giving you 
any graph, chart, or anything based on the 12th sign zodiac does not know what they're talking about. I don't care how advanced you are in your astrological understandings, your astronomical understandings. If you work with a 12th sign zodiac, you're wrong. And that will explain why you're always that little bit out and there's always that little bit of doubt. Because you should be working on the 13th sign zodiac. And you should be in full inner standing that the 13 sign zodiac is a double helix zodiac of a macro scale of the double helix DNA in your genes. And there it is. Now, obviously, it's not in this form out there. It's in a codon, which basically means this ring is moved over the top of this ring without being separated. And when you multiply that by 13, so you have 13 codons of 2, so that's 26. You have 26 codons and 2 codons of 26 interlocking. You have 52, the way the genes work on a macro scale. That's how the game works. I'll explain that more, but very basically the first step is this double helix infinity cycle of astrology isn't like this in reality it is well this one goes over the top and there's another code on here but in reality if you could see these is flat and more and more figures of eight on top of this by 13 and they're all interconnected in a continuous spiral Difficult to see and to visualize, I guess, but this is the basis of it. If you just turn this without disconnecting, the energy would run this way, would jump up an octave and run the other way. It would appear like it's running in retrograde, the opposite direction, when it's actually flowing in the same direction. It's just the way you formulate the geometry and understanding of a codon. A codon being regular repetitions of this figure of eight on top of each other, up, 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 like a ladder, times 13. So 13 times two of those, 26. Obviously reaching the 26,000 years of the great cycle. And there's another thing, folks. What the heck? Everybody has got it wrong. Sorry to say, those of you who are using 12 as the 12 sign zodiac, you're completely out because you're using a 12 sign zodiac, you're using 60 minutes, 60 seconds, and one hour, which is all system 12, 666. Seconds, minutes, and hours are all based on 60. That's half of 12. That's system 12. That's the ratios of 12. That's the infected viral system. That's the invasion. That's the real, the real sign of 13. Having one removed, Serpentania removed and hidden. And leaving you with that. So every single reading you do for anybody based on 12, all the numbers of 6 is all flawed. And quite modern. It's since the invaders invaded and destroyed the understanding of the true astrology of 13. And the true, true understanding of how astrology truly works in the realm. As far as astrology goes. But if you're out there using 12 astrology... And 60 seconds, 60 minutes, and, six, and, um, and 60 minutes in one hour, and 12 hours, and 24 hours in a day, you're on the wrong time. You'll be giving incorrect information. It'll be somewhat close, because 12 and 13 are very close, but it won't be accurate. Maybe that's the explanation as to why your astrology is always slightly out. So... That's how it goes with astrology out there, folks.
it's um it's not as it's told to you there's no way you can turn around and go back from aquarius once you're coming in this direction from aries through taurus in this direction as you see it's a circle you keep going around you can't suddenly just choose to start going backwards that's how I showed you how you get around that is with this figure of eight. If you use the figure of eight, of course, you don't need to go backwards. You just keep going forwards. There is no retrograde. So you keep going forwards from Aries through Leo, through Aquarius, Pisces, Serpentonia, Aries, and onwards through, through Leo, through Aquarius, Pisces, Serpentonia, Aries, and onwards. Continuous spiral. So that's um, that's that's the zodiac for you, folks, and just showing you how uh, folks are completely off whack with what they believe the zodiac is, and they're using a twelve sign zodiac instead of thirteen, and they're actually using a third a uh, twelve sign zodiac instead of the twenty six thousand year full understanding of the cycle. So. That's how it goes there with the um, with the old astrology. And just to wrap it up, because I can hardly talk anymore, I'll give you one more, then we'll go into another video of giving you a lot more. So bear with me for a few minutes while we go into this quickly, because it's another agenda that's floating around. Of course, the 12 astrology, the 12 sign astrology is a very deep agenda, and there's lots of astrology going on across the plane and the realm. So we need people to shift to 13 and 26 astrology and get it right. The next thing is this nonsense about pine cone tea that's floating around, that it's the new health thing is pine cone tea, or pi, sorry, pine needle tea, pine tree tea, pine needle tea. No, folks, pine trees are toxic to the human. Don't drink tea. Don't eat pine nuts, pine seeds. Don't use the pine for anything but burning the wood in a well-ventilated area. And be careful, it spits. It throws off little bits of, when you burn it, little bits of itself. Why am I saying that? Because any fool would understand, when you look under a pine tree, all you see is death. Nothing, nothing grows under a pine tree. Look in a pine tree forest. That's why they have pine tree forests with all the trees growing in rows because it's nice and neat and ordered the way the reptiles like it. Order. Not chaotic order, not mother nature, just order. Straight lines and angles. That's how the forests are planted, the pine tree forests. Look under the pine trees. There's almost nothing that grows. Maybe another toxic weed. But no nature. There's no symbiosis in pine forests. And there are big pine forests like the black forests in Bavaria. Where the Bavarian Illuminati come from. Germany. Pine trees. Pine forests. Fake nature. Not real nature. Fake nature. Invasive trees. Toxic. Martian, brought in from the outer space by extra terrestrials, from the outer arenas outside of the Antarctic ice ring, brought in to dominate Mother Nature, to take control of Mother Nature with father pine trees, monoculture. Pine forests, killer pine forests with death all below. Not symbiotic. One tree looks after the shrub, which looks after the plant, which looks after the ground growth, and they're all indigenous and wonderful and natural. No, not at all. That's not what a pine tree or forest is. Which brings me to the pine cone in the Vatican. The Pope, on the Pope's staff, 
The pine cone is everywhere because the Vatican is the invading evil force or the representation of the in the modern day of the invading evil force will be referring to as Martian reptilian. The pine cone that people are mistaking that you see these beings holding on the hieroglyphic walls of Egypt, those are the kings, pharaohs, priests, high priests, wise people of the pharaonic era, of the rulers of Kemet, of the rulers of Egypt, of the rulers over what a long time ago used to be a city of light. But they just came there and found the pyramids and took control and dominated and took the piss, literally, excuse the pun, or the, the saying. They are not rulers of anything. They are not great people. They brought the pine cone deception. This pine cone they carry around is nothing more than deception. No need to make some sort of fantasy about this pine cone being some sort of philosopher's stone or or holy stone. No, it's a pine cone. They're ruling. What they had in their bag was probably pine seeds. They're probably spreading pine forests, fake nature, like being monarchs, kings, ruling. Where's the proof? The proof is in the measurements of the pyramids. Those people, the pharaohs, didn't make the pyramids, but they certainly attached to them and knew the measurements of them. And the people before them that they're basing themselves on master-servant race before them that the kings and servants master-servant race are based themselves on the structures there are pyramids they dominate and there's small peasantry structures so we already had a master-servant race that was there before it's quite clear now you have a master-servant race again fear of pharaohs became kings and presidents and prime ministers all the same, master servant, them and us, always the reptiles and those who would work for them and do their dirty work. That's who you're calling the Illuminati, the sellouts of humanity. System 12, the pyramids, the measurements of the pyramids. The, all the measurements, the mathematics of the pyramids is based on 12. The mathematics of the Giza Plateau is based on 12. The pyramids have straight lines and angles, steps, civilization, rulers, dominators, Martians. The pyramids are not a holy place. The pyramids are the free energy machine for the elite that used to live in the subterranean area that wasn't so subterranean. Remember, the sands of time have blown upon what was there. Thousands, could be hundreds of meters deep. Could be thousands, who knows? The pyramids are master servant. Giza's master servant. Almost all of the sacred, what they call sacred sites of the world, were master servant. Those are the dominators, those are the rulers, those places are theirs. And the other people live elsewhere, the lesser. Not all sacred sites, there are sacred sites that are sacred. But they are not these sites that we talk about. Certainly not the, the Vatican. Certainly not the pine cone. Certainly not the pyramids of Giza. Just while we're on it and closing off, as I said, Jesus, the story of Jesus, the story of God. Jesus was persecuted, sacrificed. Jesus was an example of the sacrifice of light to instill fear into everybody. 
It was supposed to be such a horrific story that tells you how, if you dare, be empathic, intuitive, psychic, healing, wise, a teacher of wisdom, love, light, if you dare, we will crucify you. Literally. That's what that story is about. That story, the Jesus story, by the way, is the Horus story and the Sumerian story and the Gilgamesh story. It's found in every story just repeated. But in this story of Jesus, it's made out to be a fear-based story so that every, any light worker will live in fear of being crucified for being a light worker based on the story of Jesus the Christ. And his father is the same guy that if you misbehave according to his commandments, his rules like a king would chop your head off at the guillotine or behead you or have you hung, drawn and courted or thrown out to the wolves or thrown to the lions or something horrifically macabre and malevolent, disgustingly putrid, evil behavior, God would do the same. If you didn't live well enough, you're going to burn with eternal fire. Eternally, you're going to feel burning. Does that sound like a loving God to you? That sounds like the devil to me. God is fear, not love. God cannot come alone because everything comes in dual. So God's dual partner is the devil. So God the devil, Godzilla, God devil is the correct word. God devil. You can't have God without devil or devil without God. So the whole idea is this dual concept. You can't have left without right, up without down, forward without backwards, black without white. They're all dual concepts of the oneness. All you have to see is that there's no separation between any of them. Between black and white, there isn't. They just, they connect. You may say it's grey, but not really. It's more like the checkered Masonic blocks. Black and white. They just connect all over the place there. Not that that's a good example, but that is a good example. <clears throat> the idea of God, the Father, being a holy, beautiful, loving, empathic, compassionate person who sends you to eternal burning for the rest of your existence? No. Fear-based mind control. The word God doesn't exist in the Bible ever. Only the word gods, as in the plural, exists. Complete mistranslation, purposeful. So they can have one God. Except there's 72 religions and every single one of them is their one God. Yeah. The Christians have their God. God the Father and God the Son, the Holy Spirit. Jesus and God. Son and Father. The Buddhists, uh, the the... The Muslims have Allah and and his son, Muhammad, and Vishnu, the Krishna. The Hindus have Vishnu and Krishna and the father-son combination there, if that's right. But yeah, the father-son combination is definitely there. And in all the other religions, you have this father-son combination, the passing on of the genetic traits. That comes from the Sumerian texts. That comes from the father, Amun, in the Sumerian text, the genetic creator par excellence with the two sons, Enki and Enlil. That's the Jesus story, father, son. And Enlil became the, the Holy Ghost, some sort of spiritual entity. But really it was always down to the trinity, the male dominant trinity, Amun, Enki and Enlil, the father and his two sons. Enki, loving and wanting to assist what he sees and enjoy the experiment and the creation and genetically create beings with a benevolent understanding in his mind. And of course, Enlil, his brother, benevolently wants to just create a master-servant race. 
And of course the father wants that too. So they do create a master-servant race. And nowadays it's ruled in religious uh, sectors by the Catholics, the Catholics, by the Pope, by the Vatican. And that is the greatest master-servant race going in that the master is God uh, and his son Jesus and the servants are the population, the congregation, the people. And of course in the trinity of God and the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit they've added in, but in the Sumerian text where it's taken from, it's Amun, God, Son, Enki, and Enlil, another male. So it's a trinity of males with no female whatsoever, no mother nature, no feminine divine, just male dominant genetic creators, no emotions, no love, no light, pure evil, just dominant. Kill without a thought. Create without a thought. Life and death, no problem. Equal, just like Lego. To be played with, abused, thrown away, whatever. God is not the Almighty. There is no God. There are gods. They're all, all created by man. There is no entity out there that's coming to help you. There is no God that you can pray to and ask for help. That's illusion. It's false. There are no gods that are there to help you. It's all illusory creation. It's an illusion. It's a falsehood. It's fake. There is no Allah and Muhammad and Quran is written by man. There is no God and Jesus. The Bible is written by man. There is no Krishna and Vishnu and Brahma. This is a pantheon written by man. Buddhism written by man. Shinto, Taoism written by man. All religions were written by man. The Protestant only made up in the late 1800s. A lot happened in 1890, by the way, flipping to 1900. That's where you find your religions created. Just there, 200 years ago. Protestant, etc., etc. Even Christianity. The Bible was only written 980 to 1500 by man. Not the word of God, not the writings of God. Not even the Nagamadi texts in the Bible. Not even the book of Enoch in the Bible, the Christian Bible. The Christian Bible being taken from the King James Bible, that being taken from the Ethiopian Bible. 81 books in the Ethiopian Bible. 72 of them in the, in the, in the King James Bible. There's only 66 in the Catholic Masonic Bible. Right. How many is that? 25 books missing, including the Book of Enoch. Books replaced, books taken out of the great writings that created the Ethiopian Bible. Why in Ethiopia? Because the Jews went to Ethiopia. It's a massive Jewish population in Ethiopia. So-called took the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant, but who knows if that's true. So let's wrap it up, folks. There is no God who's going to save anybody. There's no need to pray to a God. Gods prey on people. Bishops, priests, all that sort of malarkey within the, that keep their religions going, all those who run the religions pray. They don't pray for you. They pray upon you. They pray over you. Hmm. They pray on you. Yeah. Religion is not real. It's created. 
Jesus the Messiah is created. Whether he lived 2,000 years ago or not, he's not coming to save you. Nobody is. That's a Messiah complex to make you apathetic and to acquiesce, sit about waiting for somebody else to do it until you get a shock that you were tricked. Nobody's coming to save anybody. Humanity is behaving very badly. You are your own fault. I'm talking directly to all of you humans out there, everybody, including myself. We are using technology. We are using the silicone race. We are inviting Silicon Valley. We are inviting AI like Elon Musk, advanced AI, basic AI like Zuckerberg and his silly Facebook, giving away all our details and data. How stupid are we? How stupid are we to accept surveillance mechanisms, phones, iPads, computers, to survey what we're doing while manipulating us and infiltrating, hypnotizing, brainwashing, inputting their imagination, having us create their reality, completely destroying our imagination and ability to imagine anything and output. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no gods. There are no higher beings coming to save you. There are higher beings, higher advanced beings watching and noting, but nobody's going to save you. Humanity is top technology. We have consciousness, which has intuition and psychic ability. We can create realities. That's what they want. Our only use in this whole thing is to create their reality. If we keep creating their reality into a clone, drone, a robotic reality, and keep giving them all of our consciousness through their surveillance mechanisms, phones, computers, etc., very soon they'll be able to input consciousness into AI robotic beings, and bio biology, us, will be obsolete, not necessary, a pain in the arse, far too emotional, underproductive. Ladies and gentlemen, if you continue to accept phones, technology as, in, as a whole, the silicone takeover, the silicone invasion on your carbon self, you are carbon, silicone is technology, they are at war with each other. If you are going to allow silicone technology to murder you, to murder carbon, to infiltrate, to invade and conquer, divide and rule, then you're the fool then so be it. Then may it be on your head the destruction of nature and biology and the replacement of drones, clones and uh, robots, Neuro, neurotransmitters, cyborgs, programming, data, etc. Because you gave it to them. You gave it. You allowed the beast in. You allowed the, the evil one into the home. You allowed the devil in and he destroyed. Don't allow him in, he won't destroy. Don't buy the next iPhone. Don't buy the next computer. Don't buy fucking anything. Reject it all and return to nature. Mother nature awaits you. The soil, the earth, the water, the sky, the air, trees, plants, animals, beauty, time. Patience, meditation, calm, breathing, grounding, living. It awaits you. It awaits you. Nature, life, it awaits you. Get off online. Get off online. And that doesn't mean get yourself off online or go have some sort of sexual connection online. No. Get off online. Get off online. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest thing I can ask you is to get off online. And that's not a proposal. For now, 
until we get through the rest of these in the next video. Thank you for listening. I hope that was interesting. From me, the Butterfly Boy and the Butterfly Boy Chronicles, Ascended Skies, soaring to new heights and new inner standings. Peace be with you.